Hey guys, welcome back to Tealstone Homestead. Today I am going to be showing you guys my preferred way of how to breed rabbits. If rabbit breeding is something that you might find bothersome, then I would not watch this video. I just kind of want to show you guys how I do it. Um, I do it a little bit differently than a lot of people. A lot of people take the doe to the buck's cage, um, which is because the doe gets a little bit territorial if you put the buck in with the doe. Um, and that's perfectly fine. You can put the doe with the buck. Um, I actually prefer table breeding. And table breeding can be, it doesn't have to be a table, it can be anything. And for me, it is my little wagon here. The reason that I do table breeding is because just in case the doe gets really upset, or even the buck, sometimes the buck gets really upset, I just like to have like top access where I can grab them really, really quick. That doesn't happen very often, but I, I like to make sure that I have full control over the entire breeding. A lot of people ask me what is the best age to breed your rabbit, specifically your doe. Now this answer varies so widely among different breeders. Uh, some people say easy, as early as five to six months and other people say wait until at least nine months, maybe even 10 or 11. And so for my answer to you, for a six class rabbit like a creme de argent or a silver fox, which is what I breed, I would recommend, personally, I like to wait until they're at least eight months old, preferably closer to nine, uh, but the most important thing to me is that they reach senior weight. For a six class rabbit like a silver fox, I would wait until they're at least like nine and a half pounds. And so that's exactly what I've done with Solstice. Solstice is nine and a half pounds. She is just a little over eight months old and I am very excited to breed her. She's finally ready to, I think, be a mom. When they're too young to be pregnant and you breed them anyway, that is where a lot of people have problems where their doe rejects the litter or doesn't know what to do the first time around. So just wait until your doe matures a little bit. If she's a senior, by the time you breed her, chances are she's gonna be more ready than if she was a lot younger, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. So Chai is my other doe that I'm gonna be breeding today. She is a chocolate silver fox and she is also about eight and a half months now and she's very, very small. Um, she's just a smaller silver fox and I'm not really sure if it's her line or what. I'm gonna be washing her babies very carefully to make sure their grow rates are where we need them to be, which is preferably four to five pounds at eight weeks old. That is what we're working towards, but chai is my only opportunity to kind of bring more color in. So that is why we're breeding chai today as well. Now my other thing that I'm going to tell you guys is that I would prefer to always breed two does at the same time. And the reason is because if your doe gives birth if something happens to her, if she rejects her babies, you have that other doe to foster the litter to. I don't really have any worries about these two does. They're very sweet, especially Solstice. I'm really, really excited to have Solstice babies. Solstice is Hollyhock and Thorn's daughter, and just to see that line continue on is very exciting to me. I can't wait to see what she produces. So with that being said, I'm going to introduce you guys to the rabbits that I'm going to be breeding and show you their faults and their weaknesses and what we're trying to improve on. All right guys, so this is Solstice and she is a little over eight months old. She is about nine and a half pounds. So she is definitely ready to have some babies. The one thing I love about Solstice is that she's got a really full loin. When you look down on a silver fox from the top view, you wanna make sure that their loin is very, very full and she is just a little ball, so that is that is awesome. The one thing that Solstice could use improvement on is more depth, and depth is just, this could be a little bit higher. She's got nice fur, I would prefer if it was a little bit longer, and luckily for us, Nitro is the one that I'm pairing her with today, and he's got really, really long and luxurious fur, so that is that should be a good pairing for fur, at least. Okay, so this is Nitro. Nitro is still a bit young, I think he is, about five or six months old, something like that. Nitro is a nice little buck. He's got some really long, luxurious fur, so we love that. He's got okay depth. He could use a little bit more depth as well, but we're just trying to work with what we have right now. Solstice has nicer shoulders. I should have shown you guys that. Nitro has a little bit weaker. <laughs> Nitro, gosh dang it, Nitro, stop it. Nitro shoulders are a little bit weaker, um, so we're gonna be watching the kits to make sure that their shoulders are uh, just right. We don't want to breed bad shoulders into our herd. Solstice is also a, just a little bit fuller than Nitro, so I'm really hoping that using Solstice and Nitro together is just kind of going to even that out and uh, get us to where we need to be. Alright guys, so like I said, I like to do table breeding. 
and this wagon acts as kind of a table. It's got sides on it so they can't jump out, which is great. But if I need to get in here and just grab somebody really, really quick, um, I have all control over that. And they have plenty of room. I like to put down carpet so they have something to grip on. If not, your buck's gonna slide all over the place and he's never gonna be able to properly do his thing. So when I put the buck in here, uh, they're probably just gonna sniff each other a little bit at first. And ideally what you want to see is you want to see the buck have three fall-offs. And what a fall-off is, is uh, the buck is usually very dramatic about it. Um, he will breed the doe and if he's uh, mounted her properly and if she lifts for him, he will very dramatically fall off. And uh, it's quite funny, <laughs> but that is what we, uh, we need to see. And I like to do, I like to have three fall-offs at least, but I'll usually let them keep doing it until they're, they're done, which is, it can it depends on the buck um, but it can be it can be a whole lot or it can be just a couple um, but I like to see three and then later on in the day I will actually come out and do it again and um, that's just my preferred method I know a lot of people don't uh, do the double breedings like that you don't want to spread it over more than a day though so um, if you're gonna breed them you want to you wanna breed them once um, in the morning or the afternoon and then do it again at night that's just how I like to do it um, and it tends to work out really, really well for us. So we're going to go ahead and put nitro in here and hopefully we will see a successful breeding. Here you go, bud. Okay. This is nitro. This is solstice and she's, she's not super happy that he's there right now. Sometimes the buck, Ooh. so, so solstice is trying to mount nitro. Usually what that means is that your doe is very, very ready to be bred, and he's on the wrong end. You gotta get on the other end of her. Other end. See, this is why I like to have control, because... <laughs> that, that's a fall off. So he just successfully bred her. Um, we want to see that two more times. not sure what to think of him now. <laughs> One of the things that people complain about is that they can't get their does to stop running around. It's another good thing about table breeding is that I can just kind of put my hand in there and just put it over her eyes so she'll actually stop and so he can do what he needs to do. Here's our second fall off. I'm really happy that it's going this easily. Um, one of the things that I can tell you guys that makes breeding a lot easier in my experience is um, actually two things. Handle your does often and uh, light also plays a huge factor in rabbit breeding, which is why I have LEDs in my rabbit hutch. I totally recommend holding your does a lot and giving them a lot of light in the winter especially. Alright, our third fall off. So. We can count this as a successful breeding. I'll probably just let them uh, be with each other for just a little bit longer, maybe five or ten minutes or so longer, um, unless Solstice starts getting angry with him, because that is typically what happens if you leave them in longer than you should. The doe actually does get a little bit um, temperamental, like she's done. <laughs> so, um, and she's, I think that she's almost to that point, actually. All right, let's be done for now. So that was five and she is getting a little bit aggressive with him in between breeding, so I'm gonna go ahead and put both of them back and then we'll move on to Sprig and Chai. Okay guys, so this is Chai. Uh, she is a chocolate silver fox. She's currently in a little bit of a molt, um, but she has been for about a month now, so uh, she's not losing a ton of fur. So we're gonna go ahead and breed her. If your rabbit isn't a full-blown molt, I would not suggest breeding them, but um, because she is She's not really losing much hair, she's just a little bit orangey. She should be fine. But she is a chocolate silver fox. She's on the smaller side, so we're gonna be watching her kits for their grow rates first and foremost. Um, because just, just because you have a smaller rabbit doesn't mean that they're gonna have small babies. So I would at least give it a go, especially if they're your starters or like us. For us, she is our only opportunity so far to have chocolates bred into our rabbitry. And so I would love to have some more chocolate rabbits uh, bred in here. She could definitely use a little bit more fullness in her loin. So we're gonna see what we get when we breed chai to a sprig. And I'll go ahead and show you guys what sprig looks like. All right, so this is Sprig. Sprig is, 
I believe seven months old. Sprig has three legs from showing. Uh, lots of best of breeds, which is really, really cool. Um, he's just, he's my favorite rabbit. He's also one of my sweetest rabbits. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that he can really improve what Chai lacks in. So Sprig has a really full loin. Um, when you go like this, you don't want your fingers to catch on anything. You also, when you look down, you don't want uh, to see that they are missing any definition in that hindquarters. I'm also really a big fan of his shoulders, nice and stocky, and his fur is so gorgeous. So looking forward to his babies for sure. So we're gonna go ahead and breed him to Chai. This is, this is exciting for Sprig because he has been waiting for a girlfriend all of his life. Uh, he is definitely a lover boy, so I'm excited that he finally gets to have a girlfriend. Okay, so breeding's complete. Uh, Sprig and Chai, um, Sprig only got one fall off on Chai, which should be more than enough. Um, but you know, like I said, I like to see at least three and I like to do two sessions a day. So um, hopefully, you know, I always, I always wanna do like more than necessary, but, um, but yeah, Chai, Chai was just playing hard to get and Sprig was a lot lazier than I thought he was going to be. Um, so what I ended up doing is I'll come back out here and I'll breed these guys again later on but I just went ahead and swapped cages um, so Sprig is now in Chai's cage and Chai is now in Sprig's cage and that's just so you know Chai can get kind of more comfortable with Sprig's scent and vice versa and then later on uh, we'll do a second breeding in a couple of hours and hopefully it goes a little bit uh, smoother. <laughs> Solstice and Nitro went perfectly. I'm really happy about that. I didn't swap their cages. They're just in their own cages. I will do another uh, second session of breeding with them later. And pretty much we can expect babies in the next 31 days. One of the things that I wanted to show you guys, um, I feel like there's not enough good videos on this. And I'm sorry you guys if you're not into this, um, but I do feel like there's a lot of videos out there that just don't cover this in enough detail and experience so that's what I'm trying to do here but I do want to show you guys the difference between a buck and a doe so I'm gonna go grab one of my does and I'll show you what that looks like um, and I'm not gonna bleep it out or anything like that um, there's a lot of channels on YouTube that do that I just don't want to do that um, even if I get demonetized I just I feel like it's necessary to put on YouTube so I'm gonna go get one of my does and I'll show you what uh, they, they look like down there and then I'll show you what a buck looks like. Hey guys, sorry this is post editing me and uh, I got Sprig here. I wanted to re-record this part of the video because um, for some reason my camera didn't focus very well and I feel like this is a part that might be uh, kind of important to focus on. So this is Sprig and we're gonna flip him over and we're going to see what a buck looks like on the underside. Okay, so here he is flipped over. Uh, you'll see right here, if you pull the tail down and push right here, that is what a full-grown buck should look like when you press on them. Um, and then on each side, he has a testicle. You won't see testicles on uh, little bucks. You usually don't see that until they're around uh, four or five months old or so, uh, sometimes younger. Some, I think Sprig developed pretty early on, but um, it just depends on the buck. But yeah, so that's what a buck looks like. I'm gonna get a junior buck and show you what a junior buck looks like now. 
All right, guys, so this is a little young buck, and uh, you'll see on the young bucks that they look a little bit different than the older ones. So when you press down on them, what you get is a circle. And so uh, there's no penis or anything that pops out. It is just a circle. If it was a doe, there would be a slit going down, but it's just a circle. It looks like a donut. So that is what a young buck looks like. And finally guys, here is a young doe. What you'll see on a doe is, like I said, you wanna push their tail down with uh, your two middle fingers and then press with your pointer finger. And what a doe looks like is it is a slit all the way down. So that is what a doe looks like. Like the buck looked like a donut and the doe looks like a taco. So. Now that we have violated several of my rabbits, hopefully that helped you guys out a little bit and uh, we'll go back to the other day now. Okay, I am completely covered in rabbit hair now. Um, but yeah, so that was two of the breedings that uh, we did very beginning of the year. I'm very excited for the litters to come. I really hope that we can get some blues and chocolates out of Chai's litter. That would be really, really cool. I, I'm really excited about Solstice's litter. I think more than anything because I just, I love Solstice. Anybody that knows me knows that I love Hollyhock. Hollyhock is my starter doe. She is leaving me next week to a family with 4-H kids and I'm very excited about uh, her going to them. So I'm really happy that she's going to them but I'm going to miss her like crazy. She has been such a foundation and a staple here. It is hard sometimes but uh, overall, I'm just really excited about where we're headed. Um, most of the rabbits here are teal stone generation one. Other than our creams, our silver foxes are almost all generation one, except for Chai, who's in uh, Briggs cage right now. She is from uh, another breeder, uh, the same breeder that I got Thorn from. So um, we have sold Thorn, we have sold Bella, and we have sold Cole to wonderful people who are just getting started in Silver Fox. And I am very confident that they're going to help them just as much as they helped me. Great homes for all of them. Hollyhock's going to be leaving soon. And uh, we will be working on Generation 1 and Generation 2 this coming year. So I'm really, really happy about that. What I want to do with you guys is, since we did breed chai and we bred solstice today, I want to take you guys through the entire process of breeding the rabbits. Um, I'll update you mid-pregnancy, hopefully, and then I will also update you on the actual kindling of the baby rabbits, and kindling is what it's called when a doe gives birth. I also want to take you through just those kits growing up and how I evaluate who to keep uh, who's show worthy, who's breeder material, and who is a cull, which unfortunately for them means that they will be going to the freezer. That's just kind of how my operation works. We sell breeding stock, we do show animals, and we have these guys as our own backyard supply of meat. So rabbits are amazing animals. I love my rabbits. Rabbits work best for those who really, really care for them and pay attention to their needs, which is why I am currently sitting outside when it's 32 degrees out talking to the camera about them to you guys. If I get demonetized, so be it. I think that this was a great video for you guys to learn uh, how to breed, uh, especially table breeding. I really do recommend it. If you have a wagon, it is my favorite method of breeding because when they're in cages it's just so far it's so far back sometimes to like try to reach and control what is happening so um i definitely recommend table breeding 100 percent i hope that you guys follow along on the journey of these guys having their babies and uh just the continuation of my line of silver foxes we will also be breeding some creams next month so that is also very exciting and uh i probably won't show the breedings on camera for them uh, that's probably going to be just this video, but I will definitely take you through the uh, the process of them having their babies as well. So, just really, really like keeping you guys updated. It's a lot of fun for me. And uh, I actually learn a lot as I, I tell you guys um, how I do things. So, uh, I'm, always open in, I'm always open to learning. You are never done learning when it comes to livestock. You are never done. You can be doing it for 50 years and learn something new. And that is it's one of the reasons why I love animals so much. They are so fascinating. The best way to learn is by getting your hands on them and actually 
uh, getting into it. So that is the best way to learn. So guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed. I know that a lot of people that watch my videos are not actually subscribed to me. So I would love it if you subscribe to me and we will continue this journey together. So leave a comment down below if you have any questions for me. I always try to read all of my comments and I love responding to you guys. Uh, it's just really, really fun for me. So um, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video and uh, we'll see what these guys are up to next time. Bye guys. Thank you.